the is and the eternal DNA. This is one of those deeper subjects. It's hard to put in words. I'm tempting everything I possibly can. There'll probably be more to this later, later on. This matter of the eternal DNA. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that come to God must believe that he is and is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, fear of God, prepared an ark to the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Here are some thoughts of God as the eternal is. Now see if we can follow this. You know, I've tried everything but this and more. I've said, doing this going people say, oh, that's really deep. That's the river. No, it's not. It's not for your head. Hey, it's going to be scratching your head until I get done reading all this. And I'm still pondering it. So follow, see if you can follow what I'm saying here. I look up the term, the eternal is, and found nothing. I did this on web search. Good. <laughs> the new age and the cult world hasn't, can't touch this. They haven't gotten into this matter. I'm sure they got it worded different, but there's, they got some distortion of this. So I also looked up the is. Still nothing. Finally, I looked up is, I-S. Ready for this? It is linked to the DNA research. That got my attention. I said, my God, that goes along with this series I'm running here. Now, for the skeptic, I'm saying, there it is. You, you just go into uh, Wikipedia and type in is. Or the is. Or is, yes, it is. Can't say that I understood their fancy term to describe this research. You'll be scratching your head like I did. But don't get too caught up in the research. It has something in there. Sometimes the guy did. I'll read pages of a of a book or something and get nothing out. And then at the last few words or page, something jumps off the page, and you say, "Put the book down. Forget that." I mean, when to get the get you into something to develop your lingual language, so I can express something to you. So, can't say that I understand their fancy terms to describe this research. One link led to another which mentioned this is from an insertion sequence. I guess that. An insertion sequence. I mean, I said, boy, I never heard that. <laughs> you get these words in the, together in an insertion sequence. I remember it was Dr. Francis Schaeffer who said, how do you explain before in the beginning God created heaven and earth? You got to go before the beginning of creation. And in the mind of God, which comes out of the word Rashi in the Hebrew. So in the mind of God, he created heaven and earth and would not form void. And then he expresses it, that there be light. So that was, was in un, unexpressed form that was complete, beginning in, the Alpha and Omega. The completeness of this whole totality of experience we've had in this world was in the mind of God. Imagine that. And he expresses it. And Schaefer said, now that's kind of hard to put in the human language. Before in the beginning. He said, it was before the beginning, in the beginning. And, uh, you got to see it this way. In the, he said, in the sequence of events, hear that? Now he used that word sequence. So in the sequence of God's mind, before in the beginning, he expressed it, saw it. How it all play out. There's no second guessing in God, and God had to learn by trial and error in this sequence of events. Now, us, you know, in time past, time present, time future, we get things all drug out. We get some private interpretation of what God's saying, thinking. But in the sequence of events in eternal, what had you know, the beginning is already the end. We can't comprehend that. We have this duration of time, space, in the world, you know, in 24 hour, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year, and we can't 
understand that. So the best expression Schaefer said, he said he used the word sequence of events. In the sequence of events, God knew something. And then in the next sequence of event, one thing fed, fed upon another. So, okay, let me get back to this. From an, from an insertion sequence, also known as an is, an insertion sequence event, or an is event. <laughs> oh my God. No wonder people would be scratching their head. But I, I, I understood that. Is a short DNA sequence that acts as a simple trans Posable, transposable element. Now that's another word, transposable element. And now understand that. Now, now I'm seeing this. I'm saying they ain't going to say what I'm talking about. They haven't heard any of the other videos, but they're not into my mind. This is the mind of Christ speaking, not Paul Woodward's brain, because I ain't got no brain at all, other than I've had to lose it. The game, what he also offered, transposable element. It's a Greek word. I remember. And when he got into study of Greek, you know, I wasn't a Greek scholar. I don't claim to be. But if I believe, understand correctly, for I a little bit, I just passed by a D average in my Greek classes. I mean, was a past complete action having present result? I think that was called the plural perfect. I, I don't know. Don't don't quote me on that. But the definition of the whatever that tense of, of the Greek language, it was saying it was a past complete action having present result. God transposes what took place there and is manifest in time, space, and the material world. I bring it out now called C-M-E-F. In other words, it's saying in essence, uh, all that we're doing in this life is commemorating a manifested fact of, that's eternal in this realm. And that eternal fact was expressed and it is expressed to life and really manifested at the last book of Revelation. We talked about Christ slain before the foundation of the world. And Peter comes to understand it. Paul comes to understand it. And Peter says, Christ was manifested for all eyes to know of an eternal promise and the shed blood of the Son sprinkled on the altar of heaven and only had manifesting demonstration of a model in the Old Testament sprinkled blood on the mercy seat. And Jesus crucified was the manifestation of an eternal fact of Christ was slain before the world began. And it's his finished work. Down before any man willed anything, it was the will of God, his work, and not our works. And that finished work was unconditional love, grace, and mercy on the mercy seat of God, shed for the iniquity of not only heaven, but the iniquity of the parents that visited the third and fourth generation because the first couple believed in that iniquity and that lie and plead God. I mean, how do I say that? I've said that so many times and people just like scratch their head. It's an insertion of a sequence of what's manifest in heaven will be manifested in time. What took there? I mean, we can't measure the time here. Time is different than it is here. The best thing I did was I gave an illustration in my past videos here that they said it this way. A day with the Lord is a thousand years. Now, you can take that literal or you can see it as just an expression that gives a sensation of a sequence of events in the heaven. What may take 7,000 years, and we took seven there. It's just an example, not the actual seven years. We, we got some idea of seven years. From an insertion sequence, also known as an insertion sequence event element, or an is element, is a short DNA sequence that acts as a simple trans transposable element to which to what they called a transposable element. Here's what got my attention with what this with this ending. What this ended with, this definition ended with from uh, Wikipedia. They are also very useful to researchers as the means to alter DNA 
inside of a living organism. Remember the God gene I brought out? They are going to try to alter this God gene. Remember, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall be in the coming of the Son of Man, thinking of Genesis chapter 6 and beyond chapter 6, we're seeing this take place today. And uh, guys like Steve Quill, Tom Horn, Chuck Messer, and a lot of others, they get into this thing of chapter 6 of Genesis. And the uh, prophecy about how in the end times, uh, the Roman Empire, the mighty Roman Empire, two strong legs, ends up being ten toes, clay mixed with iron. I mean, I believe it's Tom Horney gets in that. There's some greater depths to that. Go on, I won't get in that here. I mean, these guys are good at it. They did a lot of research on it. Men playing God. The real is. Trying to play God. God is. Even calling it is research. <laughs> God research. Trying to play God. Oh, well. Take this for what it's worth. Going on. I mean, I... I'm developing this. There's probably more comes out in my other transhumanism videos. It links up with this matter of the kingdom of the continuance. And then you could you had to view some of the things that Tom Horn said, some of the things that Chuck Messer's bringing out, some of the things that Steve Quill brings out. Now, there's things in what they're saying that God's giving me. I wish to God I could get the guy with them. But, of course, like I said, I don't have the credentials and the books and stuff put out there. They wouldn't see that. But that's all right. They could gain something from what the Lord's sharing with me, I'm sure. That sounds like, boy, who do you think you are, Paul? <laughs> I'm nobody. This term, insertion sequence, also caused me to think of sequence of events. Something we all have used in light of how God works things in our life experience. Sequence of events, right? One thing ties to another. You see, one thing that produces, that's how he works all things to the good, to sequence of events. It's amazing how even right now, at the type of this email, this very thing is happening. I guess we could call it God's insertion of sequented events. My God, that would, should be the title of this. It is an eternal DNA. Right? It should be called God's insertion of sequented events. He works out. That which he had decided for you were. And any interference that you are unfaithful at. He remains faithful. He will work all your little interfering actions. When you should have waited upon him. Let him direct your path. He'll take that path that you have. And work it to a good. He's like Rumpko Stills. He'll spin your straw to gold. That leads us to fulfill. That which he. God had originally intended us to be. While well, in this experience, it's amazing. That's what I'm saying. If people have not been following my videos, especially all the intentions of God, the kingdom of the continuance, you know, in the shadow of His power, all these videos have developed this over time. I can't possibly, out of my 70 years and 50 years into this research and stuff, give it all. You always get those people say, Well, brother, you ought to brought that out. I think, Well, I did. You didn't listen to the other videos. Oh well, let me go on. Here's some more thoughts I'd like to share with you. I've always thought that the first mention of this thing of righteousness, you know, the hermeneutical studies we got into Bible college, right? Anytime, a lot of time, word, like the first mention of the word usually follows that same definition throughout Scripture. And this word righteousness is one of them. I'll bring that in one of my other videos. I've always thought that the first mention of this thing of righteousness was with Abraham having God counting his listening to God as righteousness. Remember that? That's true righteousness. It's not human behavior. Because if it was human behavior, sure it didn't work, apply to Abraham. He was put into a dark, deep sleep. Tardema sleep, they call it. And he didn't perform too well over a year or so later after the death of his father. Then he started walking in what God had promised to him. And that promise would not only be to the Jew, 
But to the Gentile, he changed his name from Abram to Abraham. He would save all humanity, which was manifesting the will of God, the faith of God before the foundation of the world, the agreement between the Father and the Son, powered by the Holy Spirit, that he was not willing that any would perish and would give all of us the opportunity to exercise our free will to embrace his will, his idea of righteousness, or we could go about establishing our own and, like they say, go the way it came. I've always thought that the first mention of this thing of righteousness was with Abraham having God counting his listening to God as righteousness. Yet in the book of Hebrew, text above, which I quote above, the first heir to righteousness, it says it was Noah because he listened to God's warning. I mean, <laughs> good God. In some strange way, I sense this all connects to this matter of what I've said in other or e past emails or articles or like YouTube videos I've sent. So I put down there, is, was, is. Now, I didn't understand that. It would take me hours to explain that. Is, was, is. Noah, Abraham, is. Today, by faith, listening to God, do you see what I see in this? A warning. Then was warning now, which is. First judgment was the flood, grace and mercy. Second judgment, fire. Now, I know what I got with this definition of this word is. I'll probably hope to come back to that. Is. Is the third person singular present tense of the English language verb to be. It is. It's to be. God is. Like he says in scripture, I am what I am. I'm becoming what I am. Not that he was changing. There's many faces and changing face of God. No, God he changes not. He is. And to be manifested like a mystery, hidden, he always is. Never a time when he wasn't. From eternity past to eternity future, is, was, and ever shall be. A world without end. And thus, coming to understand this is, this God, now if anybody's changing is us. We change. And it appears from our changing that God's changing. No, God don't change. We change. And if you don't change, you can be limited with your own stupid mind. That's why I say you got to renew his mind. you got to gain the mind of Christ. What was the mind of Christ? He said, I'm from above, you're from beneath. You judge according to past, present, and future. Worldly, fleshly, carnal. I judge from an eternal world that had no beginning, no end. And I'm trying to get you back to what the first Adam left, the second Adam restores. It says, from whence Adam left, we must return. What originates from heaven will return to heaven. Anything that didn't originate from there never returns. That's why I said the flesh doesn't end, doesn't return to the kingdom of God. It didn't originate. Naked you came in the world, naked you leave. Now all those texts come together. Now, I'm trying to say, how in the world am I going to bring this out? They're going to think this is, wow, this is deep, this is, no, it's not. Is is the third person singular present tense of the English language verb to be. From this I see, if we are to be, we have to be in Christ. Remember hearing that? You hear that? Be in Christ. We've got to be in Christ. Through his righteousness, Viva the third person, Holy Spirit, singular, meaning no other. Ain't no other spirit. One faith, one Lord, one baptism. In the present tense, now. Behold, now is the step down, but now is the day of salvation. You get into the study of the eternal now. God sees in one glance, past, present, future. To him it's signed, sealed, and done. He's alphabetic, beginning, end. He's going on. In this kingdom of the continuance, and what I see, this little life that we call 7,000 years of human experience, it was like a flash in the pan in the mind of God. And then he went on. And we see it expressed out like 7,000 years. It was just a flash in the pan of God's mind. And he went on. 
with the iniquity of heaven, plunging heaven, iniquity in the garden, iniquity to the third and fourth generation, and Christ being the end of all that and bringing us back. It's called reconciliation to a primal base. It comes out in all my videos. I mean, I said, that's what I mean about if you haven't been following my videos, this is like way over your head. It's not. I know a dear sister in Christ. She's been following this for 30 years. She would read this and understand it. But she won't. So that's how I hesitate putting some of these out. Sometimes I send it out via the Dropbox, through personal, and then as people show me that they've, I'll send them the same video. But if you haven't followed the other videos, this ain't going to make no sense at all. We have conflict, we argue with me. Alright. We have to have to be in Christ through His righteousness, via the third person, Holy Spirit, singular, meaning no other in the present tense now of subsequent matter I and others have been teaching for years. Yet we know that another gospel Another Jesus has been preached by many as well. From these, they definitely had reason to fear because of the part of Apostle Warren. If we have hope in this seen world, hope is not seen, it's in the unseen. If we have hope in this world, in Christ alone, he's just a good man, you know, just another, no better than Muhammad or something like that, just a good little prophet. If we have hope in this world in Christ alone, we are men most miserable. See what he was saying. If you just have a righteous or a religious idea of Jesus and don't have the understanding of the power of his resurrection, man, as Paul had gained and taught, you will end in misery. And in other words, you will not be delivered. How will you escape if you neglect? I mean, some of us are going to be saved by the skin of our teeth, like the thief on the cross. All we had to do is say, admit to the fact that, hey man, I deserve to be here. This man didn't deserve to be there. done nothing wrong. And he looks at Jesus and said, Lord, remember me. Ha, 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 This day you'll be with me in paradise. Why? Well, I'll save them. Recalling Jesus to the memory of what the promise, and he and the Father had promised before the foundation of the world that none would perish if they would be willing to face the truth. The day themselves couldn't save themselves. He took an act of God, and he was embracing the manifest the eternal fact of Christ slain before the foundation world, and he was with him in thought, in attitude, in opinion. He didn't join the other thief. Come on down here, get us down, put the nails down, take us down here if you be the Son of God. All right, there's so much more. I, I could pause and just take off on. Just that thought, I don't want to do that. It comes out in the other videos. Noah, heir of righteousness that saved his household. Abraham reintroduces righteousness into the world. We who have received this righteousness, listening to God now, will find it to be the saving of our household. The departure with our household will be the element that condemns this world. Like it said of Noah, in the event of the flood, by which he condemned the world, became heir of the righteousness which is by faith, when his good performance, nor the wife, his wife and kids. They heard God, accepted what God said, and prepared what God said. Now, we are, we're not building a boat. What has God done? He's prepared the boat. We don't have to be like, no, and build some boat. That place is prepared for us. Now, if you want to embrace this world and its opinions and ideas, secular or religious, and don't embrace that which would deliver us, promise, wonder, where are you going to be? Like I said, Noah, in the event of the flood by which he condemned the world and became heirs of the righteousness which is by faith, hearing God speak that which delivered him and his household. So the above verse is saying that the saving of his household by which he condemned the world, God by grace alone, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, saved Noah's family. This deliverance of his household condemned the world. 
Condemn them for what? Condemn them for not listening and seeking other means of escape, distracted by it all, or so caught up in it all, they couldn't hear God's voice. Every imagination of the heart was evil continue. How evil was it? They couldn't hear from God at all. No heard from God. And listen. And his wife and kids and their wives followed that. You think they really understood what was going on when they had the whole crowd around them, mocking them, laughing at them, teasing them, could build a boat on dry land? Thinking, how are you going to float this big boat? Won't he? I mean, I go into other, I'm trying not to get, I can get off and start thinking about that now. Pray for God's insertion. <laughs> I can't catch it. Pray for God's insertion of sequented events to save you and your household. Not your efforts, His. God, if you pray, Father, insert sequence of events into my life and that of my wife and my kids and those that I love. Insert sequence of events that will save us all. That's the message of all this. March the 19th, 2013, I got this. So I now pray, Father, bring into our lives those needed insertions of sequent events which will deliver us in our families. I can't speak for the rest of the world around me. Through the name of Jesus and all that that name represents. Amen. So it's my hope that you got something out of this. I mean, it's it's a deep subject matter. It's got to be developed, brought out a lot more. And this, all the series I'm bringing out, I mean, it makes sense to me. I'm saying, God, I can't, I have to backtrack and explain everything. If you ain't following, I'm sorry. Just catch this part. Just pray that prayer if you didn't understand any of this. Father, insert in my life sequence of events. I don't need, the left hand don't need to know what I need, right hand done. I, by an act of my free will, want all that you have offered through your finished work before the foundation of the world. To save not only me, but also my household. I don't have to run them down and try to cram this word down their throat. You will structure their circumstances. They will be afforded every opportunity while in this life to hear this message. That will save them. Not only save them, sustain them, and rescue them. Amen.